Hey guys, this is Ms. Arlequin, and in today's lesson, we're going to work on using proper citations in our work. So our teaching point is how do we revise our drafts for inclusion of credible sources and citation of sources. All right, so yesterday we looked at how we could elaborate on our text evidence. Today we're going to make sure we're using and citing evidence correctly in the text. So let's say we're looking to use the following quote from Jeffrey Bartholet's How to Save the Taj Mahal. We want to quote the part where he says the Taj Mahal's unearthly grace. Now your reader is going to want to know where this quote comes from. If you look at the quote the way that I have it on the screen, you can't really tell the author's name, the name of the article, or where exactly within the article you would be able to find this original quote. What's missing from this is the citation. So when you quote or even just paraphrase information from another source, it's important that you use citations. Citations are your way of giving credit to other people's words and ideas. It's the way that you let your reader know that the information you are giving to them came from another source. It didn't just come from inside your head. If you're using information from another source and you're not giving proper credit, you're not using citations, what you're basically doing is called plagiarism. Plagiarism is a very serious crime. It's an intellectual theft where you've stolen somebody else's intellectual property and in the educational world can lead to a lot of serious consequences. As you get older, you enter high school, there's going to be definite um, consequences the most serious ones usually occur in college where you can end up getting expelled, which means you get kicked out of that college. All right, so the most common um, citation that most English students use is MLA style. And MLA stands for the Modern Language Association. And it is overall worldwide one of the most commonly used styles for citing resources. When you work in the sciences, you tend to use APA style, which is the American Psychological Association. And there are some slight differences between MLA and APA style, although there are a lot of similarities, especially on the basic level that we're gonna be using in the sixth grade. So when you cite a source in your writing, MLA style requires that you include the author's name and the page number from where the information was taken. And typically this is done using parentheses that we place at the end of the sentence. This is our parenthetical citation. And so we have done a lot of parenthetical citations throughout the year so far. If you look at the image on the right side of the screen, you'll see an example of a parenthetical citation. You've got the author's last name and then the page where you can find the actual quote. And of course, since we are quoting from the text, we have our quotation marks enclosing all of the words that were copied directly from the other author. All right, so again, parenthetical citation is where you place the last name of the author or the organization that you got the information from. Sometimes you're going to be quoting a source where an author is not listed or is unknown. And so in that case, instead of putting an author's name, you would put some other reference to where the information came from. As you can see in the example on the screen, we've got a quote from an article. The average cholesterol level of an American meat eater is 210, while the average cholesterol level of a vegan is 133. And then after the quote, you have the parenthetical citation where you have the last name of the author, a comma, and then the page number where that quote can be found. After the parenthetical citation, you place the period outside of the citation. So the ending of the quote has a comma, then the quotation mark, the parentheses with the citation information, and then your period. Now in the previous example, I showed you a quotation where the parenthetical citation had both the author's name and the page number. However, that is only one way to use a citation. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about the difference between citing within a sentence and citing in parentheses. Basically, you only need to give information that is not already contained in your sentence um, within your parenthetical citation. So for example, if 
at the beginning of your evidence sentence, you actually name the author or even earlier in the paragraph, if you're only talking about one particular author and one particular text, and you've already stated that author's name, then in the parenthetical citation, you do not have to again cite that author's name. In cases where you've already mentioned the author's name, in the parenthetical citation, you would only include the actual page numbers. So this is an example. Smith theorizes that the chicken came before the egg. And so in my parentheses, I have the pages where that information comes from. And I'd also like to point out to you that this is an example of a citation where I'm not using a direct quote, I'm paraphrasing information that I received from an entire article. And since it's not my theory that the chicken came before the egg, it's actually something I got from a source, I am including a citation. So again, citations come not just with direct quotes, but anytime you're taking information and paraphrasing it from another author, you still need to cite where you are paraphrasing that information from. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about a direct reference. A direct reference is when you directly reference the source in your sentence. And so that is what we just saw on the previous screen when I directly referred to the author Smith as the one who had the theory about the chicken coming before the egg. Here's another example of a direct reference. According to an article from the nonprofit Do Something, the average cholesterol level of an American meat eater is 210, while the average cholesterol level of a vegan is 133. So once again, you see an example where instead of saving my citation for the parentheses at the end, I'm actually citing the uh, source of my article at the beginning of my quotation. So this is actually one way of integrating your quote into your sentence by starting your sentence and stating the direct reference to where the information came from. All right, so as we mentioned in the previous slides, if you've already mentioned the author's name earlier in the sentence or within the paragraph, you do not have to then cite it in your parenthetical citation. However, if you have not mentioned the author's name, then you are going to be including it in the parentheses. And if you have mentioned the author's name, then you do not have to then mention it in the parentheses. You would only include the page number. All right, so that's a recap for our basic citations. And now we're gonna talk about what we do when there are no page numbers. So there's gonna be instances where you are using online databases as your sources. So websites and magazine articles that are just posted online. And in most of those cases, there are not gonna be page numbers for you to include. In that case, you're gonna include only the author's name or the title of the article um, when there is no author in your in-text citation. So an example would be if you are including this detail from the article by Smith talking about his theories about eggs. Experts believe that the chicken came before the egg. And then in parentheses, I have just the author's name. And of course, once again, the period is always going outside of the parentheses. And so here I also have an example where I'm using a poem that I found online, and it's from an anonymous poet. So at least one poet has asked, how do we know which came first? And so here I do not have a page number, I don't have an author, and so I'm just putting the title in my parentheses. Now when you look at internet sources, you have to make sure that you're very careful, that you are looking at the precise correct locations for finding the information you need for citing it. Um, some internet web pages are going to look pretty similar to the sample one from about.com. You're going to have the title of the website somewhere on top. And then if you are looking at just an article on a website, there should be something here where you have the title of the article, hopefully the author. Sometimes the author is listed on the bottom, and so you have to make sure you check both places. And then here you're going to find just basic website information like the sponsors of the website and additional links. Now again, when you're using an internet source that does have an author's name, it is the same um, rules for citing it. You wanna make sure that when you know the author's name, you include the author's name in your citation. Now, if there's no author, then what you're going to cite is you're gonna actually cite the organization or the website in parentheses. What you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to your address bar 
which should be at the top of your browser here. And you can see that in this one, this is a very long website address. There's a lot of numbers at the end. The only important part of a website address is the beginning, um, which includes the main domain name of the website, and then .org or .com or .edu, whatever type of website domain the um, site is using. And you actually can only include the main part of the domain, meaning you can delete the part that says www. www just stands for World Wide Web. And so when you're citing it, you don't need that. Every website pretty much starts with www. You also wouldn't need the beginning part of the website, the HTTP part. Again, that's for navigation purposes, for getting to websites. It's not necessary when citing from the source. You really only need, again, the main part of the domain's name and whether it's a .com, .org, or .edu. So blog.livestrong.org would become capital L, livestrong.org, in my parenthetical citation. And the same thing for Forbes.com. Forbes.com would be capital F, Forbes.com, in my parenthetical citation. All right, so let's look a little bit at how we could correct some incorrect citations. So here I have an excerpt from an essay. Um, in this essay, the student is writing about um, nutrition. And so a lot of their information comes from websites that talks about ingredients in food and the nutrition, nutritional value of food. According to the book, Chew on This, McDonald's pays schools to serve kids McDonald's food for lunch. Additionally, on www.chicagoist.com, some burgers are full of artificial ingredients. Can you imagine eating all that junk? Over 42% of ingredients found in hamburgers are from different animal species. So I have noticed right off the bat two mistakes. One major one is not that much of a mistake. There's a direct reference, but instead of referencing the text like the student did at the beginning, they said, according to the book, chew on this, they should have referenced the author because when you are referencing something from a text, it's the author who's giving you the information. By saying it's according to the book, you're actually personifying the book as if the book is speaking. It's very similar to saying in page. You're not going to find something in a page. It's on a page. It's from the book, but the actual source of the information is the author who wrote the book. So I'm going to very quickly revise this so that instead of saying according to the book, it's going to say according to the author. All right, so now I have my correct in-text citation. I also noticed that there is another minor mistake where they mention that it is a book, but they're using quotation marks. Now, that's not the, the proper punctuation for a book title. Book titles should be underlined or in italics. You only use quotation marks when you are citing or referencing a short text, like a short story or a poem title. Now, the second mistake I notice is the citation in-text reference to the actual website. You can see that the student has included the www, which is not correct, and also included all of the website information that includes the numbers and stuff after the .com. That's incorrect. And then if I'm taking out the www, I'm going to include a capital C. And my final mistake that I notice is that the citation is at the beginning of the sentence in parentheses. Now, you could, at the beginning of a sentence, within the sentence, mention the author, like I did at the opening of this paragraph, and the book title. However, if you are using a parenthetical citation, well, then a parenthetical citation should go at the end of the quote. So I'm going to move it. I'm going to turn this period into a comma, the parenthetical citation is going to go outside of the quotation mark, and then I'm going to put a period after the parentheses. Another way you can cite a website besides using a parenthetical citation is to include an in-text reference to the website, which we have used in previous slides with authors' names and article titles. You could do that same thing with the website, as you can see here. Instead of saying the Chicagoist.com in parentheses at the end of the quote, you could begin your sentence by saying, additionally, the website Chicagoist states, 
and then your quote. And so if you are going to use an in-text citation of a website, you're only going to take the name, the main domain name part or name of the overall website. So I might, for example, if I was using Wikipedia, I would say according to Wikipedia. I'm not going to say according to wikipedia.com. You only need the .com or the .org, the full website domain name, if you're going to cite it in parentheses at the end of your source, end of your quote or end of your paraphrase detail. All right, so now it's your turn to see if you can correct the following citations. We're going to start with number one. Fast food is contributing to the obesity of young American kids. They serve foods high in fat, salt, and sugar, making it difficult to perform actions like climbing the stairs and breathing. All right, so hopefully you notice that there is no citation here and that one needs to be added. And so there needs to be something added in parentheses at the end. That includes an author's name and a page number, if possible. All right, number two. According to loveorganicfood.com, the site says, so not only do you run the risk of gaining weight where you don't want to, but you also run the risk of a heart attack or worse. What is the incorrect use of citation in this example? All right, so hopefully you noticed that in this uh, second example, the student has attempted to use an in-text citation of the website. However, they have not done it properly. They have included the .com part of the citation instead of just referring to the website by name. And so to correct it, we would say according to the website. I would name that it's a website, and then I would just include the main part of the website's name, Love Organic Food. All right, so our final correction is for number three. Though the health risks explain why most countries have outright bans on the creation and selling of GM foods, www.greenamerica.org. What is the error in this student citation? All right, so hopefully you've noticed that once again, this student has used an improper citation of the website. They've attempted a parenthetical citation, but they have included the www which is not necessary. So to revise it, we just need to delete that part out of the parenthetical citation. All right, so now that you have a basic understanding of the different ways to cite your sources, please go back into your draft and see where you can make corrections to your citations and add any citations that are missing. Again, I wanna remind you that you wanna make sure there is a citation for both your direct quotations and for any details that you have just paraphrased.